Today's show is sponsored by Cloud Zero. For software-driven companies focused on growing margins, Cloud Zero is the only cloud cost intelligence platform that puts engineering in control by connecting technical decisions to business results. By analyzing cloud services like AWS and Snowflake, Cloud Zero provides real-time cost insights that help you maximize margins. Engineering teams can answer critical questions like, who are my most expensive customers? How much does this specific feature cost our business? What's the cost impact of re-architecting this application? With cost anomaly alerts via Slack, product-specific data views, and granular engineering context that makes it easy to investigate any cost, Cloud Zero is your complete cloud cost intelligence platform, connecting the dots between high-level trends and individual line items. Join companies like Drift, Rabbit7, and SeatGeek by visiting cloudzero.com slash cloudcast to get started today. That's cloudzero.com slash cloudcast. Cloudcast Media presents from the massive studios in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is the Cloudcast with Aaron Delb and Brian Gracely, bringing you the best of cloud computing from around the world. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome back to the Cloudcast. We are coming to you live from the massive Cloudcast studios here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Hope everybody is doing well. Another Sunday perspective show and uh continue to roll through September here in 2021. We're getting towards the last quarter of the year. It's amazing how fast the time flies here in 2021. Hope everybody's doing well. You know, there was an interesting set of discussions and they kind of popped up from a diff- couple different places and some people that I have a lot of respect for and, and some people who have been around the industry for quite a while. Kicked around a couple of different conversations this week on a couple of different social channels. And it was interesting because a lot of it had to do with kind of this uh, overwhelming number of people. And, and again, you know, everything on social media is always sort of a, a small sample size, but kind of a, a large number of people who are kicking around this idea of, you know, really wanting to be able to get out of tech, sort of quit tech. And it got me thinking, because uh, it is something that I think anybody who's been around the industry for a while, no matter how successful you've been, uh, you go through periods where it, you know, it gets frustrating. It gets, uh, you know, it gets to where you're bored or the thing you're working on just isn't going where you thought it was going to go, or sometimes it's just overwhelming, whatever it might be. And you do think about, you know, is this still a thing I want to do? Because uh, on one hand, it's a pretty amazing industry. We get to work with a lot of very, very smart people. We get to solve a lot of times very interesting problems. Um, you know, you get exposed to a lot. It changes very quickly. And if those are things that that motivate you and get you excited and make you passionate about stuff, um, it can be a really interesting space. Um, you know, it can also be, you know, a very difficult space. Um, you know, there's a lot of big egos. Um, there's a lot of personalities. There's, you know, it's computers that don't always work. Um, it can be hard in your family. It can be very long hours and all those sort of things. And so I understand the perspective. And I, as I was reading through it, I thought, well, maybe that'd be an interesting topic to talk about sort of you know, why do people kind of go through the various stages of, should I stay in the job I'm in? Uh, Is the job I'm in satisfying? Should I look for something else? Uh, Maybe it's a different company, maybe it's something different to do. Or ultimately, maybe, 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 you know, why do we why do we want to quit? What what makes us kind of want to go down that path? And so I thought that would be sort of an interesting topic to sort of dig into today. And again, you know, this is one of those topics that uh, you know, I get a chance to to mentor some people and talk to some people. And these are kind of some guidance that I give to folks, but it's also, you know, based on some of my experience, but most importantly, just having a chance to talk to a lot of people. So if this is something that you'd like to give us feedback on, we'd love to hear about it. Um, show at thecloudcast.net. Uh, we'll always take your feedback and, and stuff like that. But we're going to kind of dig into this right after the break. Today's show is brought to you by CBT Nuggets. You know how much we value ongoing education on the Cloudcast. And CBT Nuggets is exactly what Aaron and I wish we had when we were trying to get our certification early in our careers. CBT Nuggets is all about bringing a personalized touch to learning about cloud computing, virtualization, networking, DevOps, and much, much more. Whether it's their hands-on labs with personalized coaching or the online chat functions that come up with every instructor-led course, CBT Nuggets' team of experts is always there to help you get the most from your training and your PASA certification. You can check it all out at cbtnuggets.com slash cloudcast and sign up for a free trial. You get access to the full catalog of great training, including virtual labs, quizzes, and other premium features completely free for the first seven days. That's cbtnuggets.com slash cloudcast. Today's show is sponsored by Veeam. The forecast is showing clouds, so make sure you're prepared with simple, secure, and cost-effective cloud data protection from Veeam. Take advantage of this exclusive Veeam offer that includes unlimited AWS or Azure backup free for 30 days. That's free for 30 days. 
$250 in cloud credits and 25% off when you buy 12 months. Veeam has you covered. To check out this offer, visit vee.am veeam slash free dash azure dash backup dash credits. That's vee.am slash free dash azure dash backup dash credits. And we're back. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, we're going to dive a little bit into that, you know, that topic that I mentioned that I saw kicking around a couple of really interesting uh, tweet threads from a couple of different folks. Um, one was a, a guy named Chris Munns, uh, who's over at AWS. Another from uh, Christian Riley, who a lot of you know, longtime friend of the show, longtime guest of the show, um, is over CTO at Citrix. Um, and, you know, they kind of came at it from different perspectives. Chris uh, had just sent out kind of a random tweet, said, hey, you know, can't wait till I get quit tech, uh, whether or not that was something he's been thinking about or just sort of a spur of the moment thing. And then, you know, a lot of folks kind of followed up and, you know, kind of gave their perspective on it. It's kind of their take on, hey, you know, is that something they're interested in? And then Christian uh, had sort of sent a, a follow-up tweet. Not, I don't know if it was specifically in response to Chris's, but it was sort of, you know, him saying, "Hey, you know, I, I'm somewhat concerned, right? Like you see those sort of things in the industry, and you wonder if it's just, you know, a few people or if it's a trend, uh, you know." And, and so he was kind of exploring as well. I included links to to both those in the show notes. Um, and I, I thought I would sort of dive into that. Um, I, I will kind of caveat things with. You know, I, I'm speaking from a position of my experience, right? Um, you know, I, I'm a certain age, uh, I'm a certain gender, I work uh, in a certain part of the industry, I tend to be more vendor centric than sort of end user centric. Um, I'm a certain age, I, I have a family. Um, so, you know, there's certain things that are important to me or are more relevant to me and may or may not be relevant to you. Um, so again, you know, keep in mind that this is just sort of guidance that sometimes I give to folks uh, as I mentor younger people or people who uh, are coming into different roles. But, uh, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Um, it kind of comes from from my perspective, my experience and so forth. But some of it may be useful to you or give you some uh, perspective on, you know, what what to do at certain stages of your career and so forth. And I thought what I would do is sort of break this down into, you know, what do you do when, uh, you know, you're not really thinking about moving around? Um, what, what makes you stay in certain roles? What makes you look around? And then what makes you get to a point where you say, hey, I'm, I want to quit, right? I, I, I can't do this anymore. This just isn't the right thing anymore for me or my family or my partner or whatever it might be. Um, so I'm going to kind of walk through those and kind of give some perspective on this. And, and again, um, you know, your feedback is always appreciated. We love to kind of get people's perspectives. And again, if there's anything we can ever do um, to help out, um, please let us know, uh, you know, again, show at the cloudcast.net and we can try and uh, try and make it, you know, try and give you some advice. I know we've done that for a number of people over the years. So um, let me start with sort of stay. Um, you know, a lot of times the things that you know, when you're enjoying your job, um, because we spend so much time in our jobs, again, whether you're in an office or you're on the road or you're remote or whatever you are, um, you know, you spend a lot of time. And, and so you're typically looking for a couple of things, right? Do I enjoy the work? Am I getting pleasure out of the work? Do I enjoy the people I'm with? Do I enjoy the management? Do I enjoy the culture uh, of the group that I'm in? Do I enjoy the focus that we have on a day-to-day -day basis? The second thing people often look at is, you know, am I being recognized well? Am I being compensated what seems to be fairly? Uh, does it feel like there's a path forward for me, right? Um, you know, uh, do you see uh, a path to get promoted? Do you see a path to make more money? Do you see a path to take on bigger challenges or bigger projects or, you know, manage a team or whatever, you know, whatever motivates you? Do you see a path for that at the job that you're in? And typically, if you do, you, you're you typically wanting to stay. And then oftentimes, um, you know, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. You need to have this job, right? It needs to be the job that you have right now because either it pays what you need, uh, it has the health care that you need, it's in the city or the location you need it to be, it's the right hours of the day to allow you to, you know, spend time with your family, whatever it might be. Sometimes, um, you know, the the things that you find are the most important things don't always have to be the most important things for other people. So, you know, you may have colleagues and coworkers who, you know, love the challenge of the work and you just love the pay or you just love the hours or you just love working with somebody in particular. And, you know, you may not love other aspects of it, but there's some part of it that you just have to have or you need to have. So those are all great reasons to stay in the job that you're in. And for a lot of people, you get some aspect of that 
on a day-to-day basis. And so, you know, the thought of going somewhere else or doing something else or quitting doesn't really come up day-to-day. You don't really think about it. But, you know, when might you consider looking at something else, right? What might drive you to consider doing it? Well, the first thing sort of is almost the the antithesis or the negative of all those things I just mentioned, right? Maybe you don't uh, feel like you really enjoy the people you work with, or you don't enjoy the culture of the company, or you don't enjoy your manager, right? A lot of times people will say they don't quit companies, they quit managers, or they quit the culture they're around, right? If that's not doing it for you, again, it's like a relationship. If it's not worth your time, it's not making you happy, that's often a time when people start to look around. Another time is, you know, you don't think you're being paid fairly. You don't think there's a path for you to to grow, either professionally, salary-wise, opportunity-wise. Um, and, and in some cases, uh, that's you know, because you have bigger ambitions than, than your company thinks you have, you're capable of. In some cases, um, the job that you want, the thing that you want to do, there's already somebody in that job and, and there's not room enough for multiple people. Right. And that's not unusual. That's not a knock on the company. Um, you know, it'd be like saying, Hey, I'd like to be, you know, the quarterback of some football team. Well, if they already have a starting quarterback may not be a place where you can go and you may have to look other places. So, you know, you have to look at, you know, if there's not a path for you, maybe that's somewhere to go explore. Are there other companies that want your skills, that want your personality, that want your ambition, uh, that are willing to pay you, right? Um, In some cases, maybe you want to change. You want to move to a different city. You, um, you know, you, you want to find another opportunity. And, and again, you just want to explore what's out there. Sometimes you've been in a job for a long time and you're just saying, Hey, I want to go explore. It's been four or five years or it's been whatever. Um, you want to go explore and there's nothing wrong with that. And again, you'll hear from a lot of people in our industry, um, whether this is a good thing or a bad thing. And this again, goes back to your management, the culture of the company, the people you're with, um, you know, who's maybe ahead of you or in front of you or more senior than you. Um, sometimes, you know, if you're really motivated by something, whether it's more money or a different scope of work or a different title or something um, and you just can't get it at the company you're at, right? You've tried, you've pushed for it, you've asked for it, you've demonstrated. Um, sometimes you've got to go other places and, and it's unfortunate. It's an unfortunate part of our industry, but, um, you know, we do see people who, you know, get bumps by leaving. Um, and some people take that well and some people don't take that well. And, um, you know, they, they look and they go, oh, well, they're, they're a job hopper or they're just moving for titles and stuff. And yeah, that happens. It happens a lot in our industry and whether it's a good thing or a bad thing is entirely up to your perspective. Um, I've had opportunities to do it and had it work out well. I've had other opportunities or work with people where it's, it's backfired on them. And so you gotta, you know, you gotta be careful about what you're doing and how frequently you're moving and, you know, who you're moving with and all those sort of things. But, um, you know, those, those all can be reasons, legitimate reasons why you might look around. The other thing is you may just get a great outside opportunity. Somebody comes, comes along, a recruiter hits you up on LinkedIn, or you meet somebody in an event or whatever. And they go, Hey, you know, here's this cool thing. You know, you want to join us, right? Or we're looking for somebody that has your skill and you may not have been looking at all. Um, and something comes along and, you know, it's not a bad thing to, to take some of those phone calls, to take some of those meetings. Um, it doesn't mean that you're not loyal to your company. It just means you're aware of what's going on in the industry. You're aware of what possibility is out there for you. Um, so those are all things for looking around. Now, let's take this third category, which I think, you know, was kind of the reason I, I wanted to focus on this today, because it really got me thinking is, why would you quit? What would make you want to quit? Um, and I think there's a lot of reasons for this, right? Um, the simplest reason is maybe you've, maybe you've just been really fortunate. Uh, you've been really lucky. You've been very uh, in the right place at the right time, all those sort of things. Um, and you've made enough money and you just said, this doesn't do it for me anymore right? Like tech's a great industry. It can be very lucrative in the right place with the right skills and the right situation. You might just say, I've made enough. I don't need any more. I don't need to be, I don't need this for 50 hours a week or 70 hours a week or whatever it is for you. Um, and if you can get to that stage, that's, that's awesome. Um, there's not a lot of people that are able to do that. Um, but if you are able to, and, and that's what makes you want to quit, more power to you. That's probably the best reason to to want to get out of it is that you no longer are passionate for it. And if, you know, 
the money is, is able to allow you to do other things or do great things for your family or charities or whatever motivates you, then, then that's awesome. Um, now the next reason that you may want to quit or maybe forced to quit is sometimes age. Um, and you know, I, you know, I hate to say it, but the reality is in our industry, um, you know, age is not a typically not necessarily a, a super, um, great characteristic to have, I guess, or, or valued characteristic to have, um, you know, and, and again, it, it all is, it's all perspective and it all depends on the job. And again, all those sort of things, but, you know, in general, um, you know, at a certain age and typically in our industry is probably around 50 or so, um, you start to become what looks to be fairly old and not just old, uh, cause there's plenty of, uh, you know, smart folks in their late forties and fifties and sixties and seventies and all sorts of ages and stuff, but you're also perceived to be expensive and maybe you're sort of in the middle of the chain. You're not sort of doing all the work anymore. You're middle management. So, you know, do we need to keep you around? And so that may be something where you may not want to quit, but the industry may sort of be forcing you to quit. And this is something I, I often tell people, especially there, you know, in their early forties and stuff is, you know, when you're, when you're cruising along and you feel young and you feel good and you're getting to work on a lot of things, make sure you're planning, make sure you're planning because tech doesn't go on forever, right? You can, I mean, there are opportunities to do it, but, um, you know, I, I, more than a handful of times I've had folks who've called me up and they had a great career for a long time and they got to some senior level job senior director, VP, senior VP, whatever it was. And they hit 50, 52, 53, 54. Their company came along and said, Hey, um, here's a package. We we'd like to maybe see you leave, right? Like you're, you, you know, you've been great, but uh, maybe an early retirement's a good thing for you. And what you don't want to do is, is get blindsided by that sort of stuff. Right. Um, you know, they usually pay you to leave for some period of time, but maybe you still need to work. Maybe you want to work because the other thing that happens is oftentimes if you're at that age, uh, you've, if you've got a family, your kids might be going to college. Your kids might be getting married. Your, your, your family life might be in a stage that's very, very expensive and you may not want to quit, but the, the industry may want you to quit. So make sure that, you know, if you're, you're, if you're hitting that age, which you probably should start thinking about as you really hit 40, because you've got, you know, 10 years or five years or whatever, start planning for it. And you got to think about the other aspects of your life that might be at your salary level that you have, uh, you know, at some level and expectations you have for future expenses that are coming up in life, big, big moments in life, um, start planning for that stuff because the reality is our industry can be harsh and, and things can happen very, very quickly and you don't want to get blindsided by it. Um, I have seen some people who want to quit because the industry is not very fair to them. It's a dangerous situation in some cases for them, right? They, they work in hostile work environments and they work in environments that psychologically aren't very safe or, um, you know, people, I mean, there's all sorts of, you know, horror stories that we hear out there. And, you know, this is something that, you know, first and foremost, uh, hopefully if, if, unfortunately, if you are in one of those situations that you seek help, um, that you seek out people, um, if you need help, uh, there are lots of us you can reach out to, uh, anonymously directly, um, that we can, you know, help get you in with the right kind of people. Um, you know, none of us are psychiatrists or at least, or, you know, social workers or counselors or, but we know a lot of people. Um, so if you're in those situations, first and foremost, take care of yourself, uh, reach out if you need help, reach out anonymously directly if you need help. Um, but you know, that's one of those situations where maybe that is not a bad situation to quit. And, uh, you know, it might be a great situation to quit because you don't want to be in those situations long-term. You don't want to be in them short-term, but, um, you definitely don't want to be in them long-term. And, and that may be a situation in which you say, I need to quit and quitting might not be a permanent thing, but it might be, I need to quit this situation. I need to quit this job. I need to quit this manager. I need to quit this city. I need to quit whatever it is that, that puts you in that harm or that danger and so forth. And so that's unfortunately something we see quite a bit. Um, and, and, you know, the way to think about that is take care of what you need to do right now, you know, get into a better situation for tomorrow, the next week, the next month. Um, and you may want to come back, right? You may want to come back to tech in a more safe situation in a more, uh, encouraging situation, a more positive situation and whatever. And so those are all very real and, um, you know, feeling like you want to quit in those situations is, um, perfectly understandable. Uh, it's unfortunate, but, you know, hopefully you can find ways to, uh, get you through, 
out of that situation into something positive, into something safe, into something that you can trust talking to people uh, and those types of things. Um, you know, a couple of other things that I sort of had written down, um, y- you know, make sure that if it's something that you're not passionate about, um, there are a lot of things in, in technology that you'd be surprised. Um, maybe you don't know this space or you don't know that space, but technology is so broad that, you know, if you've been around it for any period of time, five, six years, 10 years, whatever it is, one of the things that you've learned very likely, if you've, you know, stayed in this industry, you've been reasonably successful is how to learn, how to adapt. Um, and so sometimes you'll feel like I got to quit. I got to get out of some situation, but the reality is your ability to learn, your ability to communicate, your ability to, to manage change and, and deal with those sort of things are very valuable to people. And while you, you know, may not be a Java programmer or a networking engineer or a, you know, cloud specialist or whatever you are, there are people who may want some of the raw skills that you have. And so, you know, be careful in, in saying, Hey, I can't do something because that, that ability to learn is probably one of the most important skills there is. And then finally, you know, again, be really careful. I, I say this just, uh, given, given my own age and kind of situation and, uh, you know, knowing what I've got coming up the next number of years with my kids and colleges and other sorts of things coming along. Um, you know, be careful quitting out of something that, um, you know, it's, it's hard to get back to, you know, you may quit out of a salary level, you may quit out of a, an insurance, a healthcare sort of thing. Um, you know, you, you really need to sort of break it down into what am I passionate about? How much do the people around me influence what I'm doing? How much of it am I working in a safe environment or am I just frustrated? You know, figure out where you're at in all these things. Talk to people. Don't go through these things by yourself. Um, that's the worst thing you can do because you know, you, you paint scenarios for yourself that you just can't figure out how to get out of. But, um, you know, I, I think we're in a really interesting time right now. I think the pandemic has done amazing things to change how we view the world, um, whether it's you know, your ability to work remotely or whether it's, you know, your perspective on life is short. I need to make sure I take advantage of it. I, I need to make sure I'm taking care of the people around me. Um, you know, whatever it might be, the pandemic has, has changed a lot of things. It's changed a lot about what companies will let us do. Um, you know, we didn't used to be able to work remotely. We can now. Um, there's people changing jobs. There are people moving jobs, moving cities, moving all sorts of stuff. So, you know, I, I know there's a lot of thought out there. People are watching a lot of people jump jobs and I talked about this last show or the show before that. Um, you know, so if you're in any of these stages, just be thoughtful uh, get other people's perspective. Um, you know, even if it's a colleague, even if it's a, somebody who works at a competitor from you or whatever, um, tech's a small industry and there's a lot of folks with a lot of good perspective that have been through a lot of things. Um, find some people that are in similar situations to your, yours, pick their brain five minutes, 10 minutes, an email, a Slack a DM, any of those sort of things can always be really helpful. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I've gone through all these things myself. Um, you know, I, I've had, I've had, a, I've had jobs where, you know, I called my spouse and, you know, on the first day and said, I don't know if I'm going to be here for five days or five weeks or five months. Um, cause you just sort of know there's red flags there. And there's other times when you go into a job and, um, you know, you have no idea how long it's going to last. And, you know, five, six, seven years later, you're still there and you still love it and you're still got opportunities. And, and we're all somewhere in between those things. And, uh, hopefully, Wherever you're at, whether you're deciding to stay, looking around to leave, or, you know, maybe even consider quitting and and doing something completely different, um, you know, put some thought into it. Um, Reach out to people that you know, reach out to people um, that you see talking about it. There's a lot of people engaging in these conversations. Tech seems to be a much more transparent place than it was even two years ago. So hopefully um, some of that advice was useful. Um, I know it's something that is on a lot of people's mind quite frequently. Um, just, you know, where do I stand? Where do I want to go? What's next? Um, and I wish you all the best of luck in, in wherever you're at with that. So if there's anything else we can ever help you with, uh, here at the cloudcast again, show at the cloudcast.net, if we can introduce you to somebody or just give you some perspective on things, um, love to help. So we appreciate the community, you know, reaching out, listening to us, uh, helping us grow the show, 
telling a friend about the show, we're always appreciative. And if we can give back, uh, we will always uh, try and do that as, as best we can. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you again for listening. Thanks for telling a friend. Thanks for giving us feedback on the show and rating the show and all the ways that you listen to the podcast. And with that, we'll talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to The Cloudcast. Please visit thecloudcast.net to find more shows, show notes, videos, and everything social media. 